So I work for administration and finance at uh, Cal Poly, and the group I work for is a technical group that handles uh, computer support for administration and finance. Um, AFD, which is administration and finance division, handles like all the non-academic operations for campus, so uh, human resources, police, payroll, finance, um, handling all the grounds, that kind of thing. So we're, we're new in the lean game. Um, we've only been at it a few months. We're trying to kind of start a culture change, and that's, that's fallen to my office to kind of implement that. So uh, we, as part of that, we're going out in different directions, and one of those is to uh, bring Eric in for Kaizans, both to you know, help us improve individual processes within our area, and also to grow leaders and hopefully have somebody within, a couple people within our area who can run Kaizen events themselves. So we just recently ran one for uh, uh, a process that kind of rose to the top of something that we'd like to change, which was our employee intake process. And so this process is every single new person who comes to Cal Poly who's going to get hired, what's the process that they go through, uh, and, uh, and how, how they get, end up getting to work and how they get paid. And um, this process was something that, that uh, is, there's, there's several paths in it. There's staff, there's employees, there's faculty, there's students, there's temporary faculty. So we kind of had to choose one of those. And the, uh, the temporary faculty piece uh, was one that um, had unique challenges that we felt could be used for some of the other processes. One of the challenges we had as well is that we have two paths uh, for new people. Some staff go through, staff and management go through human resources and everybody else goes through payroll. And so we're looking at two different processes, both of which had a lot of overlap in them, and uh, trying to figure out a way of how to apply sort of this lean manufacturing concept to a business process. So we had, uh, we had some help from some MBA students who did a uh, Prezi presentation for us. And so I'm going to walk through this. So this was the uh, Team 7. Uh, they, they put this uh, together for us, and uh, they, did a, they did a pretty good job. They also helped out in the Kaizen. So this is, uh, this is a little bit of the background again. Um, you know, it's the face of, it's the face of Cal Poly. We wanted to uh, see, uh, to provide something better for each new employee that came in. And, and uh, what we found was that the impression that we're getting new employees, how many people are employees here at Cal Poly? So, so some of you have been through this process. And, and if, you remember, if, if you remember what it's like, they hand you this giant stack of papers. And human resources, they were handing out uh, over 35 different pieces of paper. And in payroll, it was somewhere in the high 20s. And that's a lot. And then somebody walking through that process with you, taking 20 to 30 minutes, and that that uh, wasn't efficient efficient for an employee. Um, They're just overloaded with information. It didn't make a good impression on them. So we we wanted to change that. Um, so yeah, it was a time consuming process. It was interesting with the information that was provided. We were, we were looking at what information people were getting, and. Everybody wants to add, everybody on campus wants to add something to this process. They all, you know, they're a new person, we want to tell them something important. And even during the Kaizen, which ran over several weeks, payroll was approached on three different occasions to add something else into the process that we were trying to lean down. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, kind of fa uh, fighting this wave of information. Um, that's a video that doesn't display well on, uh, on our environment here, so I'm going to move on. So again, we decided to work with temporary faculty. Uh, we we're starting out with, uh, they had 23 different pieces of paper, and it was taking 22 and a half minutes. I, th I think that's a, that's a conservative estimate. It's probably longer than that. Uh, a lot of the forms required information, uh, telling the person what it means, what information you're giving them. And it was just like 20 minutes of straight talking about through all these papers, and then signing your name again and again, and putting your address in, social security number. Uh, through all these different forms and processes. So, uh, you know, we're trying to ask why, why are we why are we doing this? And uh, one of the things that was helpful in this is that Eric, I don't know if, how many people have been through a Kaizen. Um, Eric has this stack of cards. It's a whack pack, and he passes them out on the tables for people. 
And one of the cards that came up was slaying the sacred cow. It's a, you know, they're concept cards. And that one really was, that was the driver because nobody had questioned why any of these documents were in this process for a long time. People had thought about it, um, but having, having process in two different places meant that it was difficult for ownership in either place to make the changes that need to happen. So getting everybody together in a room to look at this was uh, was very helpful. And that, I think that particular one was was successful. So this is uh, this is the overview of what the process looks like. Um, it's uh, you know 30 some odd steps. And uh, as I get down in here, each one of these steps is a form or a piece of paper that has uh, uh, so many fields that have to be, and, I, and I'm not sure what all these uh, initials are, but <laughs> it, uh, how much time it took, you know, how many how many fields the person had to fill out. So, you know, I'll go back here. Um, it, be with the number of blanks and, you know, it was a, it's a tremendous amount of information to hit somebody with on the first day. So, you know, at some point you got, you think there's got to be a better way. So we wanted to, uh, you know, we're, we're Cal Poly. We, hopefully can have some sort of professional process for people to come here and get hired, um, one better one than what we had. And so we want to set a positive tone for new people coming in. So uh, our goals and targets, we wanted to get rid of information we didn't need. Uh, we wanted to make it take less time. Uh, in the case with temporary faculty, uh, we don't, the payroll office doesn't always know when they're coming. They're getting hired out in apartments around the university and then they just show up. And there's no advance warning and sometimes they show up, they could be a dozen people at a time. And when each person is taking 20 minutes, um, you can imagine standing in a line waiting while you're, you're behind the person who's getting talked to about it and then you're hearing everything they're hearing. And then you get to hear everything again while you're standing there and signing the pieces of paper. So. Um, you know, some people would just end up leaving. <laughs> um, but it's, ne it's like there's forms that are absolutely necessary for people to fill out and get hired to be able to work. So obviously we've got a problem there. So analysis, the whys, you know, um, you know, why, why is it taking so long? Um, that's questions you have to ask. Why, why do we have all these forms? Um, why do they have to be filled out on the spot? Why can't they be filled out ahead of time? And uh, so those, these are some of the, some of the, uh, that's the analysis of it, of what we're trying to address. Uh, PR measures, um, obviously eliminate things you don't need. Um, I know that's shocking, but there it is. So uh, you want to try to, information that you don't need to tell the person, we want to put it somewhere else. Uh, fortunately, since I work in the technical group and we're trying to help drive this, uh, it helps that we can help provide technical solutions. So, um, you know, creating a new web page for some of this information is a good one. Trying to get that information to people in advance. Um, consolidating forms. So if, if we can, if a person has to fill in their name seven times, if we can get that down to one and it populates everything else, that would be better. Um, if times are really busy, drawing in HR and other departments help with those flex times, getting more people. So instead of a single threaded, you multi-threaded, get more more people going through the process at the same time. Um, Cross-training, making sure that departments who are out on campus, who are hiring people, uh, know about the process so that they can they can inform their new employees uh, of what of what the process is, so that when they show up, maybe they call before they show up, so we can. We can uh, get more timely, uh, uh, like schedule people in, so it's more, it's easier. Um, having a central website and then uh, using that website to uh, automate some of the information. Um, just, just as a point of information, uh, one of the one of the forms we were handing out to temporary faculty. Temporary faculty come on, they work for a quarter, and then and then they leave, and it's like a hire and fire. And one of the forms that was being handed to them was their separation form, which I, yeah, it, not a good, <laughs> not a good impression. So short term, medium term, long term goals, um, just trying to get the information down. Um, short term, we're looking at just eliminating 11 to 14 forms right off the bat. These are mainly informational that other departments had, had, had asked us to read to people. Uh, so that, you know, from our previous uh, graph of this, 
obviously that's about half of it right there, just by creating an informational website that you just, we just email to the person and say, here, read all this stuff. We know you're not going to listen to us. Maybe when you have time back at your department, you can look at this. Uh, medium term goals, um, trying to, uh, there's some great acronyms there, but trying to cut down a couple of the other more complicated forms, um, get this process down a little more. Uh, that was short term again, sorry. Uh, medium term, so that that narrows it down to we're getting into twelve kind of twelve steps here, and then long term we really wanted to try to get down to two forms. The I nine is a proof of uh, ability to work. That's one that has to happen for every employee, and then the California oath, which I can't uh, I can't uh, dictate right now, but it's it's pretty amusing if you read the thing. So those the, <laughs> those two have to be done, and then trying to trying to automate everything else, and. Uh, timelines. We we just ended our kaizen last week, so we're still in the process of implementing all this. We've we've got people who are um, assigned the duties to to uh, to to work through this process. We're working on the website. So, short term, we're looking at a, a few weeks to get the initial done. A couple of months for the medium term, probably the six month period for the long term, because that will that will require some more technology. And then here's what our long term goal looks like, which from the 36 odd boxes from before. Um, not that you can read that, but it still looks better. <laughs> so total savings, um, long term, we're from like, uh, if you, uh, kept a number of uh, blanks here. It says 262 blanks that a person was filling out when they showed up. That's a lot to write. And we're looking at getting that down long term, down to 49. So that's, that's a pretty good improvement. Number of pages that we're handing them from 57 down to four. That's um, seems seems like it's in the right direction. And forms from 23 to two. Um, again, I, I I think that's a that's a worthy improvement. We'll see if we get there. I know I have no doubt that we'll hit the medium term. Uh, this long term, but we'll see what what technology offers us. So uh, we already had our meeting on the sixth and um, got uh, everything assigned. That was, that was kind of critical in the process because uh, for those of you who have been through Kaizen, you, you get so wrapped up in what you're doing. People are mapping things out. you got paper everywhere, and uh, people are excited, and then like, oh, well, we better put this into a plan. So, uh, so that came around. Um, some, uh, before I go to questions, some of the, some of the uh, benefits we found from doing a, a Kaizen and bringing people together. Uh, a lot of it is just bringing people together um, and giving them the time to think about these things. Uh, having two different departments who were doing, again, having two different departments who were doing this process, no one really having ownership over the other department, afraid of stepping on each other's toes, getting everybody into a room together to say, okay, now we're actually going to tackle this and having everybody tackle it together. There's, there's there's really no substitute for that. You can't you can't accomplish it the same way. People are all off in their own little fiefdom, especially in a, a political organization like Cal Poly can be to to accomplish those things. So getting those people together um, from a from another standpoint, just the fact that we're getting people together for 12, 14 hours over a several week period, uh, we get benefits from that, right? We're trying to we're trying to change this one process, and changing that one process is worthy goal. But we're also giving essentially 16, 18 people training in how to think differently, and all think the same way about how to change something. So then they take that thinking back, and they go back to their department so they can apply that to other processes, um, and hopefully inspire other people. Uh, the one of the other things that I think is very beneficial for this, because we're, we're bringing in outside eyes, we bring in people from other departments within the division, and even within the division, we have about 450 people in our division, and uh, different departments don't, just over time, they, they maybe don't trust each other, uh, they, uh, they don't understand the challenges that the other departments face. So by getting, bringing those people in, and they see that they see the challenges that somebody else is facing. They that develops empathy within their departments, and and that goes a long way to getting the division to act more in a unified way. And then each 
department faces very unique challenges, and facing those challenges, they develop strengths to overcome those. And so by having other departments in, those departments then get to see the strengths that this other department developed, and that's something they can also bring back amongst the fact that it's, again, like a 16 hours of training, they're 14 hours of training, and how to be, how to think differently. And, and so that's, that's, it's, it's a start for us. It's one, it's one area we're going down with Kaizen where we're trying to do some other things as well for business process improvement to kind of create a culture change within our group. But it's, uh, and I've got people excited and that's good, but we still, you know, with the, no question, we've got four or five solid years, so many processes that we can improve. But having a success from one will hopefully help us uh, set up for future ones. So um, that's that was what I had. So um, any questions, comments? Uh, so that's that's the part of tackling these types of different operations. Yeah, we actually are tackling each type of different operating processes. Yeah, we are. We actually HR is already. Um, they've already started to uh, try to take a look at that. Um, they're looking at their pack, which I <laughs> wanted in in the uh, Kaizen. Uh, one of the ladies in HR, she was saying how, you know, payroll had a stack of paper, but, but HR had a weapon. That's what they call it because it was in a folder and it, it was, it's sizable. So they're cutting through that at the same time. And in this, we're, we're also trying to decide, and we have, I think we have management buy-in for this, that the process is no longer going to go through both departments. It's all, everybody's going to go through payroll. So then you have one place and they have a better physical setup for it. So that way, if changes need to be made um, along the way in an agile way, then, um, then it's easier because you have a single owner. So that's where that's going. Sure. The, the question was, um, uh, we're down to a couple forms, are they giant? No, we didn't just... Uh, <laughs> We didn't just take all the forms and make them into a 50-page form for the. I, I really like that idea. That would that would be really quick and easy and easy to implement. But uh, yeah, the I9 is um, it's interesting. Uh, that one of the challenges with the I9 is that you see you used to have to fill it out within three days of employment. Now it's the same day, so you can't work unless you're there and you have two forms of identification and you fill that out. So we'll see what that's that's an additional challenge we have. So this is kind of timely. I have a question. Um, you had mentioned that that this process had been um, because of the touch point with new employees that people were adding onto the process and that mm -hmm. payroll actually had that occur to them, you know, through the process where people are still trying to add. So how is the team going to address that as that continues to happen um, where that people want to take advantage of that touch point? How is the team going to respond? Um, to those newly right. So I'm going to repeat that for the people who are, so the question was, um, how do we stop the flow of new people wanting to add information to this process? And for your group, it's interesting because you have the, you have the portal uh, change password for your, it's happening right, that right that now. everybody wants to add something to that, so it's, it's very similar. So uh, for informational um, uh, forms, since there's going to be a website that's a single point of information, uh, a lot of information would just be added there. And it wouldn't, that doesn't uh, change the process that the person has to go through on the spot. So that's pretty easy. Um, for other things, unless, you know, the, the, it's always about how are you going to gracefully tell the person, no, you can't do that. Um, and uh, so I, they're going to they're gonna have to develop a way of nicely saying that and still providing customer service. Um, but it will, they'll, they'll have to draw the line on some of it. And the thing, the, what they've gotten down to is just the things that are mandated. So by saying we're only doing mandated things, um, that's that's a way to help say no. So um, there's a question here from um, from Keith. How are you going to measure if your customers are seeing improvements, are happier, or better? First impression of Cal Poly. Um, we didn't talk about uh, measuring customer satisfaction from this, but. A lot of the departments in the division do customer satisfaction surveys so that go out to constituents on campus. Um, that would be one way we could do it, uh, though I don't think that was discussed. Um, you know, if they leave with a smile on their face instead of their shoulders slumped. I think it was like, like a smile and no parking ticket. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> smile, and no, smile and no parking ticket. Yeah, because the, uh, they, they get you quick on campus. I hope you all put money in your name. <laughs> 
There's another one here. Uh, does the process need to be run one applicant at a time? Aren't most of the forms the same for everyone? Um, they uh, Hancock, they schedule groups. So there is some group scheduling. That's something that HR does um, when you know the people are coming. It works with staff. If you have four or five staff all coming the same day, you can schedule them together. If you have a dozen temporary faculty show up at your door that's um, and they're all five minutes apart, that's very difficult to do. So that's what we're trying to reach out to the departments, the hiring departments, so that they'll tell payroll when they're sending people so that they can do that very thing and get people in a room and explain it once without the 50-page form. Is there a, a term you can substitute for Kaizen? I'm familiar with the uh, value stream analysis from the steering committee mm -hmm. and a rapid improvement event. And after the event, there's actual change. Uh, so you haven't seen change yet? Is that correct? Yeah, we're implementing the change right now, yeah. So is that we're, in my, my understanding, would um, Sure. So, so um, get that one, Eric. So, so Kaizen, um, all, all that means is sure. So, so uh, um, identified some issue so or, or problem that that um, some issue you want a bunch of people to address, and um, I guess it could form you know any place in the process. We're actually talking earlier today about well, what would be the sort of the ideal situation, and to me, the ideal situation is you'd have some sort of company strategy that's been you know well defined. You'd have major breakthrough areas in the current year that you're trying to make progress on. And out of those major breakthrough areas, you're trying to identify, okay, what kind of Kaizen events do I need to have in order to make those improvements? And um, you know, as Troy was saying, and, and I think as some of these other people have experienced, you know, the magic of the, the Kaizen is a lot of it's just about getting the right people in the room together and giving them the actual time to address an issue that, you know, they've been feeling the pain for so long, but, you know, um, they think it's only them or, you know, they think they have no power over fixing it and making it better, and you say, no, you know, you can, you can actually make it better. So at the end of that, is there a result? I mean, can they obtain a result at the, at the end of that particular session? Yeah. So, so um, it's possible. You know, we, we usually try to identify sort of the quick and easies, okay, and, and the things that we're going to do different, you know, sort of walking out of the meeting. Um, a lot of times, though, that at least our experience has been at Cal Poly in these 12-hour formats, you know, um, we just get to the point where we identify a plan of action at the end, and then we're going off to actually implement afterwards. And then the trick for us is to try to figure out how do you do the effective follow-up and make sure these things are, are implemented. You know, so that's uh, that was what was so good about that that meeting was last uh, last week was you know when you get to the end and you actually do have like the names and the dates and you know and, and you said you're going to do this when and we can call you up and ask you well did it really happen? Uh, we will always end our Kaizen with what we call it the Tactical Implementation Plan, which is exactly that, action, who, when. So mm -hmm. no one walks out of the room until that thing is done, and every actionable step is identified with the user. And that's what we call it. And that's kind of mm -hmm. the Right. You know, always walk out of there with a, with a plan or an action item list, man. Because you know? otherwise you're just wasting that 12 hours. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say we're, um, we've sort of hit the time limit for the virtual portion. So I'm going to get out of virtual mode here. Thank everybody who's been watching. I really appreciate it. Um, stay tuned. We'll try to get this stuff posted on a Central Coast Lean website. So, so anybody who wants to relive these moments can go back and relive them again. So thank you very much.